67 video walkthrough. Uh, in this video we're going to pick up a few bits and bobs that are not necessarily story critical but they're definitely critical if you are have a bit of an easier time running through the game. So as you can see we're going to start off just outside of Calm here after the flashback. Make sure that you've picked up all of the items that you can in, in Calm. Um, especially like the Megalix, uh, there's a Peacemaker in there as well. We covered most of that in the last video from Calm. You're just going to head all the way down to the southeast until the grass takes a bit of a change in colour from this dark green to a lighter green. Um, make sure you've got someone that's a multiple of level 4 in your party. I've got Cloud at 16 so that works and he's got the enemy skill material equipped on him. And you're looking for this like mountain molehill type thing here and it's the attack that it's just used there straight off the bat, level 4 suicide. Um, that's what we need, and that's going to help us pick up another enemy skill now. And as soon as you've got that, just finish off the fight. As you can see, Matra Magic just chews through him for the most part. Once you've picked up that enemy skill, you can head into the Chocobo farm here. Head up to this first Chocobo and interact with it and select the first option. And they'll do a little song and dance for you, a little bit of a performance. Uh, and once they've finished that performance, what you'll get is your first summon material, which is the Choco Mog material. Now, probably the most useful thing that you can do with that at the minute is pair it with the elemental material uh, and put it in Cloud's weapon. Not right away. We'll get right. We've got something else that we need to do with the elemental material first. But that's probably going to be the most useful thing. It'll add wind damage onto Cloud's attack, and a lot of the enemies that you're going to be facing are weak to wind damage. Now, after you've done that, head over to the house there, speak to Choco Bill, uh, and he'll explain to you that you need to get a Chocobo so that you can get across the marshes without being killed by the Midgar Zolan. We're going to do things slightly differently, but you do need to get the Chocobo Lawn material. So if you come over to here, speak to Choco Billy, uh, ask him for a Chocobo, he'll tell you that there's none available, but he is then going to tell you how you can like catch your own Chocobo. So you can skip all of this if you already know it, click not interested, and then it'll sell you the Chocobo Law material for 2,000 gel. Buy that, and on top of that, make sure you buy some greens as well. Yeah, So I'd recommend grabbing a Mimic Green at least, and maybe a few of the other cheapest green, but the Mimic Green you're going to need for this. But keep running around, equip the Chocobo Law material to a character, make sure the enemy skill is still equipped to Cloud, and keep running around on the tracks until you'll eventually find a fight where you've got a Chocobo with two of these enemies. So the two of these enemies are the Levicrons, Levricons, or two of the elephant type enemies. And that way you'll know what level the Chocobo is. So you'll know that it's a multiple of four. I think it's 16 the actual level off, something like that. Yeah, 16 I think it is. So you're going to throw the Mimic Greens so that the Chocobo sticks about and then you're going to use level four suicide on the group. And because the Chocobo is of a level there, it takes damage, it's now going to counter attack with the Choco Buckle attack. And because it's countered directly to Cloud, he's got the enemy skill material on, so he learns that attack. Now, it's not the most useful attack, it does damage based on how many times you've run away from combat. But if you want to get a complete enemy skill list, it is one that you're going to need to pick up. Now, we're going to pause for a moment because we need to look at materia setups here and there's a checklist of things that you need to do. So, the first thing that you need to do is you need to get the elemental material, you need to put it in Cloud's armour and pair it with a fire materia just so that it reduces the amount of damage that Cloud takes from fire attacks. Then, after that, you're going to want to use a tranquilizer on Cloud just so that it takes a little bit less damage. His limit gauge will fill up slower, but it, it'll reduce the amount of damage that he takes, which is something that we definitely need to be doing there. Now, once you've got both of those things done, so you've got an elemental materia and a fire materia paired in Cloud's armour, you've got the enemy skill materia on Cloud, and you've got a tranquilizer. You can just use one on Cloud to make sure he survives. That's what I do here. Um, or you can use one on everybody just to try and reduce the damage a little bit. But without that any elemental fire material combination, the other two are pretty much dead anyway, so it's pointless using a tranquilizer on them, if I'm being honest. Once you've got that set up, you're going to go into the marshes here without a chocobo. We do need to catch a chocobo at some point to run across it if you want a nice easy time, but that, the game explains how to do that to you. You just go into combat like that fight previously and feed a greens to a chocobo and while it's distracted you kill the everything else that's in the fight with it so that the only thing that's left is the chocobo don't hit it don't kill it 
once you've done that, the chocobo is yours and you can just sprint across these marshes without any problems whatsoever. But what we're going to do is we're just going to step onto the marshes, wait for the Zolom to come over to us. Also, make sure you have saved before this because, you know, it's probably going to take a couple of times. You might find that you win the fight, but you don't get the enemy skill because it will knock one of your team out of the fight at a point. When Once its health gets to below 2,000, it'll eliminate one of your partner one of your teammates from the fight but they're not dead so you'll always then restart at the edge of the marsh but if clouds died after he's learned the enemy skill he won't retain it so you need to make sure cloud survives the fight which is why we're going with the elemental fire materia and the tranquilizer so step onto the marshes there's all the more mooch over to you and the fight begins so first things first do everything you can with Barra and Aeris to get a poison on the enema. Because the poison is going to do the bulk of the damage for us, to be honest with you. Obviously, you can start off with a cheeky little braver. I don't know why I'm not using Crosslash here, because Crosslash does do more damage. I think I'm just rushing through it. So there, we've took him down by about 600 health already. Now, like I say, once he gets to below 2,000, you've got him. Now... It might take a few attempts for bio to stick, so this is why I bought two bio materials. Well, I bought a second poison material rather than just keeping the one. Because now we can have two people going at it and they can just keep on casting bio. I probably should have took that cover material off Barrett as well, because he's just going to eat so many shots. But then again, he's protecting Aeris, so, you know. I think this is where we get the poison on him. Yeah, there we go. So now you've done this, you're going to pretty much cure only with Aeris now. She's just literally keeping everybody alive. Barrett can do little bits of damage here and there if you want him to. And with Cloud, same. Do bits of damage, but I'd recommend keeping Cloud's turn free. Because there'll come a point where you desperately need to. Now, at some point in the fight, like I've just done with Aeris there, you can cast Sense on the Zolom just so you can keep an eye on its health. You'll have an idea where you're at with it. Then. Again, defending with Cloud. So we've gotten down to 3,000 already from 4,000. So we've done 1,000 damage. The poison's going to start kicking in now. That's taking a nice solid 125 a turn, roughly. Which is decent. Like I say, it can take a few attempts. I think this took me two or three attempts to get right. He's reared himself up now. So we're getting close to the point where he's going to start doing the things that we want him to do. But again, that cover material. Although, to be fair, he has protected Ares there. there was, there's a good chance that shot would have took Ares down. We do need to revive him just so that there's something there for the Zolom to knock out of combat because we really don't want him to knock Aeris or Cloud out. As long as you don't do anything with Cloud at this point in the fight, or at least nothing offensive, you shouldn't touch Cloud. Right, and I think this, if I'm, yeah, this is where things start to happen now. So he's going to counter attack that by knocking Barrett out of the fight. And once he's got you down to two, that's when he'll use what we're looking for. So you just need to keep Cloud's health as high as possible. Anytime he takes damage, just cure him, heal him. Because eventually, this happens. He uses the beta attack. Now because of the fire and elemental material, and because of the tranquilizer, this isn't going to drop Cloud. You saw how much damage it did there to Aeris. But Cloud can manage to get through it. Now luckily we had a potion stacked up. We're going to drop another high potion really quickly. Because if he takes one more hit, he's down. There we go. And now, his health should be around 500, 400, something like that. Even lower now, because there was another hit on the poison. So this should be the end. And there you go. You've learned probably one of the most overpowered enemy skills. At least, it, well... It's definitely the most overpowered in the first disc. Now, once you've done that, you're going to grab a chocobo and you're going to head across the marsh. You get a nice little cutscene. For some reason, the recording didn't take. I did do a recording of it, but it didn't take. And I've gone way past that stage. So, unfortunately, I can't go back and do that. But like I say, just catch chocobo by getting into a fight, 
defeat everything that's in the fight with the chocobo after feeding it a greens and yeah head across the marsh now inside the cave you're gonna head to the right first because this area here is probably the next area where you're gonna want to do some level building you get nice groups of enemies like this uh, the beta attack should take everything out except for the flying dragon because they resist they absorb fire Alternatively, you can just use Matra Magic on every group. You also should start noticing now that you're going to start getting level 2 spells. This is where I started getting my first few. So I've got Ice 2, I think, Bolt 2, Fire 2, things like that. As you can see, there's the beta attack. It's going to drop everything else in the fire. And considering where we are in the game, those levels of damage are insane now. As you can see, it used Flamethrower on Cloud. That's what we were looking for. That's another enemy skill in the bag. So in this episode, we've picked up four enemy skills. A summon. And we're not finished yet. So finish off the fire. Cheeky little ball. It doesn't look like I've picked them up at this point. This was probably... I think this is literally like the first fight that I went in there. I got the enemy skill. Now, I'd recommend running around in this room for a bit. Just purely because... You get good large groups of enemies, you'll build up your limit breaks quite quickly because the way that you unlock the next level of limit break, as we went over previously, is by killing as many enemies as you can. So there's like a, a, a number that you have to hit for each character. It's a different number for each character, but it'll teach you the next level of limit break. So once you've got, like in level one, there's two limit breaks. To learn your first level two limit break, you have to kill X amount of enemies with that one specific character. So this is a brilliant place to get that because most of the groups are four or five enemies. Um... And on top of that, the XP is not the worst, it's decent. Now, once you've finished in that room, you're going to head back to the main room, to the left. And what we're looking for is these guys swinging the ball and chain around. And you just want to steal from one of them a Grand Glove Katifa, which is a weapon that's on the same sort of level as all the other weapons that we've stolen so far, like the Hard Edge, uh, like the Atomic Scissors, like the Striking Staff. It's that level of weapon. So make sure you grab that. And then once you have continued left through the cave, and eventually you'll, you'll eventually you'll reach an area where you bump into the Turk. So you've got Rude and Alina here, and then Seng turns up. But well, they accidentally let slip where they're heading to, so they're heading to Junon, which is over to the west. Now we are going to head there, but we've got two more things that we can pick up in this small journey. So climb up the tree, obviously loot that room to the north as well. I think there's a, an ether in there and something else. And then once you come out of the cave, drop a save, and then head to the south. Right, keep heading south, eventually you'll come to a reactor with... Well, it's, it, it's a giant phoenix condor on top of it, basically. Uh, so, speak to this guy. He'll tell you what the situation is. They're being attacked by Shimmer because they won't let him access the macro reactor, that sort of thing. Make sure that you've come into here with Barrett and Red 13 in your party because it will give you positive affinity with Barrett for the dating mechanics. But if you come in with Ares or Tifa as well as Barrett, it'll also give them positive affinity, which you don't want. You just want it on Barrett. You're going to come over and speak to this old guy here. He's going to give you a bit more information on what's going on. So as you can see, Barrett and Red 13. And then when you get the option, you're just going to agree to protect the reactor. Now, there's a couple of shops over on the right, so if you need to go and sell any ethers, things like that, because you do need to have a little bit of money to do this. This one's not as bad as the next ones because we are going to be coming... There's like a little side mission where at certain points in your game you can come back to Fort Condor and do one of these missions. And if, if you do the whole mission, you get a decent amount of items for it. So speak to this guy in the grey outfit. He'll give you the lowdown on everything. Once you're done, tell him that you're ready. Now, he'll give you a clue. So there's many beasts, so you want to deploy some attackers. Now, general tactic for this is... Go down to about the halfway point, you'll be able to place troops there. I tend to drop one attacker or one troop at least on each line. At least one of them is going to be an attacker though. Just like that. And then you're going to start the game, so press circle, select yes. 
use R2 uh, to speed up the match, and then you're just going to run for the bottom of the bottom of the screen. And what this does, it gives you more area to drop troops into then, because the line where you're allowed to drop to drop troops in is determined by how far down the screen you've got. As you can see, that red line there. So it's moving down as you and your troops move down. And what you can do then is you can just set up catapults and or like rock throwers, things like that, just to get those corridors so that if something does go wrong and your troops do end up losing out, you're covered. Like it said, try and use attackers because these beasts are weak to the attackers. And you can keep pressing on and eventually this guy will appear, the commander. Once he appears, just send every single troop that you've got towards him. Don't buy any new troops yet. He is weak to, I think, I want to say it's the defender unit that he's a bit weak to. But there's no point in buying any of them if you've got, what, 12 normal uh, normal troops left. You might as well use all them first because they'll probably get the job done. Uh, after the fight, you'll get the magic comb, which is a weapon for Red 13. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's all you'll get on this turn. But there's a lot more that we can get from Fort Condor. After you've left Fort Condor, you're going to head to the north. Uh, and you're going to find one of the forested areas there. It doesn't really matter which one. Keep running around in there until eventually you'll come across this character here. As you can see, we have got the level 2 spells and everything now. So you're just going to keep on smashing away until she drops. And then you need to be very careful once you get into the next screen. Because this is a hidden character. This is Yuffie. Uh, so she's going to join the party as long as we do things correctly. If we don't do things correctly, she's going to steal some stuff from us and run away. Which we don't want. As you can see, she's not a pushover, but she's not particularly difficult either. She has turned Barrett into a frog, but, you know, that's just fun. There we go, that's the end of that fight. Now, no matter what, you don't want to do anything that takes the view away from this screen so don't open your menu don't use the save point don't do anything go over to your offer try and speak to her and you're going to say not interested now she'll continue to try and antagonize you a bit run forwards and speak to her again and you're going to select terrified on the next option i think it is petrified there we go so you're going to select petrified I'm going to say, wait a second. Agree with her on that one. But then don't name her. Just say, let's go. Because if you, are, if, you, if you try and name the character, you've obviously left this view then, and she's just going to steal from you and run away. She is a dodgy one. So yeah, don't bother naming her. She'll shout her name after you in a second, which is when you'll get the opportunity to name her. There you go. And that's it. You've now got Yoffie in the party. Now, there is a big side quest that we can do involving like a, a, a separate island, a separate continent and a separate town. But we're going to leave that. We're going to put that off. Normally, you can do that as soon as you get the tiny Bronco. We're going to put that off until after we've gone on the gold saucer date with Barrett, just purely because you get a lot of affinity for Yuffie if you do that side quest and it might mess things up. So we'll just put it off for now. There's no, you're not really missing out on too much. It's, it, it's easily held off. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the main story again. We're going to go to Junon. Uh, there's a few items that we can pick up in Junon. Uh, a couple of little secret ones. There's a nice weapon that we can pick up for Cloud. Uh, there's going to be a few bosses in the next one, as far as I can tell. Yeah, so we're going to have Genova. Uh, we're going to have the Bottoms Well fight. And we might even push on a bit further than that um, into like the North Coral area and stuff like, that, stuff like that. So we'll see how things go with the next one. But that's going to be the end of this video. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, smash a like on the video and subscribe. Thanks.